Summer Wars, a 2009 film by Mamoru Hosoda, is an excellent anime that has a lot of math references. And while I love math, I can also understand why a lot of people don't. It's hard, and people don't really know when to use it. Well, you're in luck, my fellow weebs. I'm going to teach math by using anime. So, how are you going to represent Japan, anyway? Huh? Sakuma mentioned you came really close to representing Japan in something? Oh, come on! What's all the blushing about? Well, I almost got to go to the Math Olympics this year. Wait, Olympics? For math? Hey, you must be pretty good then, huh? Good thing, because I suck at everything else. Seriously? Then <laughs> show me what you got. All right. Tell me both the year and the day that you were born. Okay. It was on July 19th, 1992. On a Sunday? Huh? That's what day of the week July 19th, 1992 was. It was a Sunday. You're saying you memorized all the dates? No, I used modular arithmetic. So, did I get it right? <laughs> uh, I don't even know what day it was. So for today's lesson, we will focus on how Kenji found out Natsuki's birthday was on a Sunday. What did he mean by modular arithmetic? Well, modular arithmetic is a system where a group of numbers start to cycle and repeat just like a clock. There are 12 numbers on it, and after midnight, it cycles back to the beginning, back at 1 o'clock. You can apply it to anything, as long as you can find a way for it to repeat, like jungle camps in League of Legends, or defending against boss attack patterns in RPGs. So how do you do it? Well, it's illustrated using this equation, A equals B in mod N. I'm going to be honest, trying to explain an advanced mathematical concept to anime nerds is a pretty hard task. Give it up, math nerd! This isn't long division! But for this particular problem, you've been given the tools to do the basics back in grade school. We're going to divide with remainders and leftovers. Just as a bit of recall, we're going to divide 10 by 7. 7 can go into 10 one time, and we get an answer of 1 remainder 3. And that's it! Now you can do modular arithmetic. Let's dissect this equation. What do A, B, and N stand for? Well, let's talk about the elephant in the room. What is the mod? When we think about a cycle, it would go from the item in the last position and back to the first. The mod, aka the N, would be the number of items in the cycle. Like how there are 12 numbers in a clock, N would be 12. And looking back at our example problem, we can find the mod by finding the divisor, which is 7. Now what about the B? When we're using the mod equation, b is the number we want to find in the cycle. Also using our last example, it would be the dividend of the problem, making b 10. And finally, the last part, a. Ah. It is the answer that we want and is represented as the remainder. Also using our previous example, we know that this is 3. And this number, well, we don't care about this. It's absolutely irrelevant to us. And that's it. I color-coded our example to help visualize the easiest way to find A, B, and N. So as long as you know the division problem and the answer is remainder, then you can do modular arithmetic. So now that we know what the equation looks like, what does it even mean? And how can we use it? Since the mod equation is used in cycles, its purpose is to show us where the items are in that cycle using numbers. Let's take our clock example. The cycle has 12 hours, so we'll use that as our mod. And let's say it's 10 o'clock right now, so we'll use that as our B. Then the equation looks like a equals 10 mod 12. However, what if we wanted to know what time it is 10 hours from now? Then we add 10 to b and it becomes a equals 20 mod 12. Let's divide with remainders and we get a equals eight. Thus we know that it is eight o'clock. This mod equation can be used to find the time after adding more ridiculous hours. Let's say like a hundred hours. Then the equation becomes a equals 110 mod 12 which is 2 o'clock. It's that ability to calculate ridiculous cycles that makes modular arithmetic extremely useful. Now the real purpose of this video. How did Kenji use modular arithmetic to find Natsuki's birthday? Well first, there's a reason why Kenji chose to find the weekday specifically. When you look at cycles for our modular arithmetic, we look for a consistency. When it comes to days in the year, not every year has 365 days. And not every month has the same amount of days. But weekdays, there are always 7. So. Let's begin. Since there are 7 weekdays in the cycle, the mod, or n, is equal to 7. For every remainder, from 0 to 6, it can correspond to a weekday. Thus, whenever the remainder is 0, we know it's Sunday. If it's 1, it's a Monday. And the trend continues until 6 is equal to Saturday. 
So if you know what A is, you know what weekday it is as well. So we figured out what N and A is, but what about B? Well, every date can be associated with a number. So I'm going to use the day of the month as a B. So using the first day of the month as an example, I can say B equals 1. And in mod 7, the remainder is also equal to 1. Thus, it is a Monday, which works really well in this example. Objection! I'm going to use her grandma's birthday party as an example. It's on August 1st, 2010, and the characters know that it's on a Sunday. Wait, that means 1 mod 7 is equal to 0, which is wrong. So I'm going to correct it by putting in an extra step. What if I subtract 1 to b? Then b equals 1 minus 1, and thus is equal to 0. Now it's correct. But what's the point of having the extra step? Well, if I didn't subtract the 1, then it tells me that every month starts on a Monday. And we know that's not true. So I had to find a simple way to make the equation work. So whenever the month starts on a different day than Monday, and this is an easy way to correct it. All right, now that we've established that there's extra steps, the rest is actually pretty simple. So Kenji found out what day Natsuki was born on, even though it was a different year and a different month. The great thing is that even though months and years don't consistently have the same amount of days, weekdays will always have seven days. So we can apply mod seven to them as well. Months have 28, 29 if it's a leap year, 30 or 31 days. And applying mod seven into it, you get A equals zero, one, two, or three. Let's check out a calendar. February tends to have 28 days. If February 1st starts on a Monday, then by adding zero, there's no change to B, and that you find out that the next month also starts on the same weekday. So now I'm gonna find Natsuki's birthday for this year. Her birthday is on July 19, and her grandma's birthday is on August 1st, a Sunday. Since her birthday is in July, the month prior, we'll subtract three to B. Natsuki's birthday is on the 19th, making it 18 days apart from her grandma's. So we'll add another 18 to B. So now applying what we know, Natsuki's birthday in 2010 is Monday. And lastly, the years. As years consistently have 365 days or 366 if it's a leap year, then just apply mod seven like we usually do. 365 mod seven is equal to one and 366 mod seven is equal to two. If you've ever noticed, you will see that your birthday will always be the next weekday after every year, except for leap years. So for Natsuki's birth, which was 18 years ago, has an extra step of minus 18, and with four leap years, minus four, subtracting another 22 to B. Combine everything we know, 15 minus 22 equals negative seven. Seven can go into it evenly with no remainders, thus A equals zero. It's a Sunday. End notes. And that concludes my first video. I learned a lot from making this, and I hope you learned a bit more about what higher level math is like. My next videos are going to be a lot shorter and simpler. I chose this to be my first video because it pushed me to teach something that I've never taught professionally before. I'd also like to say that modular arithmetic is part of learning abstract or modern algebra. I had to omit a lot of information to prevent your brain from overloading. Looking at YouTube, a lot of future projects of mine has not been discussed yet, so I expect a lot of original content from you in the future. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.